chimney in the Milky Way. It's a discovery that could help explain how stars affect the way our galaxy is shaped. And with more on this, we are joined now by York University's Dr. Marshall McCall. Nice to see you again. How Good are morning. you? Great, thanks. Now, can we start? We got, we, I think we have to start at the beginning. We use special telescopes for this, radio telescopes, right, right. In, in an array in BC. Now, tell right. us about Pal this. Penticton. Yeah. Well, in the day of the Hubble Space Telescope, we often forget that really important stuff's being done on the ground. And one of the great subjects that's often overlooked is our, our radio astronomers and the radio astronomical facilities. And we have a very important one out in Penticton, BC, uh, at the Dominion Radio Astrophysical Observatory. Is that it right there? What that's I see it. looks like a TV satellite dish. Yeah, except there's a bunch of them in a line. And in fact, radio astronomers are so smart that they can actually use a bunch of small dishes to mimic one very large one, and that's the whole point of this array of dishes. Now they're on, it appears like, like rails, like train tracks. That's they can right. be moved, I And they I move them it. back and forth, they change the separations between all the dishes, and they synthesize a dish that's much, much bigger. Oh, the purpose is to synthesize a dish, which very tells large. you what? Which, which, which gives bigger the dish, kind? the more fine structure you're able to see on the sky. And the, and the arrayment itself, is that is that important? Is, is, has it been a straight line? Well, it's in a straight line, but you have to remember that the Earth is spinning. And as the Earth spins, the dishes, the, the line, changes its axis with respect to the sky. So in the end, this line ends up tracing out the shape of a dish. Boy, it's already getting tough to <laughs> yeah. follow. Okay, so you're aiming at the Milky Way. What part of the Milky Way are we looking at? We're I looking, think we have some pictures to show. Yeah, that's right. We're looking in the direction of the constellations Perseus and Cassiopeia. And there's the kind of direction we're looking at. The Milky Way goes through that part of the sky. People are very familiar with that. Let's think about what the Milky Way represents for a moment. It's a big disk filled with a lot of stars. That's what we see. It's a big disk? Yep, disk like, like a pancake. Yeah. But in addition, between the stars is a lot of gas. We don't see the gas with our eyes, but they emit radio waves. If we had radio-sensitive eyes somewhere around there, we'd be able to see lots of clouds floating between the stars. Which constellation is that? That's uh, in between Perseus and Cassiopeia, the mm -hmm. big W. Now, radio astronomers, what they're able to do is map the gas between the stars. And in fact, with special techniques, they can actually show us all the gas between here and the other side of the galaxy. And in fact, they've constructed this fantastic movie of what it would be like to fly from one side of the galaxy to the now, other, from the us to them. Seeing? This is it. Now, the, this is all made possible because using the radio that's astronomy right. technique, this is radio. you can go through materials. Exactly. If you had radio-sensitive eyes, this is what you would actually see. So what, what are we actually seeing? We're seeing, <laughs> okay, the orange area is there. That's kind of like the, one of the great resorts of the Milky Way, kind of a club med and a Yellowstone Park all rolled into one. <laughs> well, it's a nice metaphor, <laughs> but I still don't know what I'm looking at. For all What we're seeing is we're kind of flying through a spaceship towards that resort. And as we're flying through the spaceship, we're passing through all the clouds of the Milky Way. And you could see all those wisps coming and going, thinning and thickening as we do so. Now, what's interesting is along this direction, as we get approached to, uh, closer to our resort, we actually arrive at a region of the sky where there's a thinning of the clouds. And we'll be seeing that uh, shortly. A thinning, which is the shape of a giant cone. Um, now, this cone happens to have an apex which is located at the center of the orange there, this resort I was talking about. Mm -hmm. You see the cone has appeared there? There's all these clouds around, <laughs> and then there's this big cone, of a cavity where there's no clouds, a clearing in the clouds. Okay. So the question is, where did that come from? At the base of that cone, there's a cluster of about nine stars. If you were sitting on a beach in this resort, what you would see is nine suns instead of one, every one of them a million times more luminous than our sun, every one of them blowing a nice wind upon your body at about 10 ki million kilometers per hour. And it's the cumulative effects of all these winds from the hot stars which is causing a clearing of the clouds around them. Hence and that the cone is the, is the chimney, chimney. Yeah. where the clouds have been cleared and a vent has been created by which the hot air can be tossed out of our Milky Way. But I, I thought space was empty. Well, wrong, no, I guess, uh, huh? you couldn't be more wrong. It's filled with all kinds of gas. What uh, kind of gases? It's all mostly hydrogen, mostly just pure hydrogen. Mostly, ga it's gases we know. Uh, gases we know, but hydrogen gas. It's kind of the atmosphere of the Milky Way. Yeah. Now, uh, once we know this, what does this tell us? Because well, apparently this has implications for the... Exactly. Uh, the best way to look at this is to imagine making a pancake. 
you dump the batter <laughs> in the griddle, and as you're waiting for the first bite, you notice that these bubbles begin to form on the pancake. And these bubbles, they rise, and then they pop, and they leave a little hole in the, pan in the batter, right? right? Those holes are vents, just like chimneys, that allow heat from within the pancake to escape. So these vents are very, very important because they allow the galaxy to release its hot air. And not only that, if some stars later on were to explode, those chimneys provide avenues by which all the junk that's produced in the explosion can escape from the Milky Way. So they're great uh, vehicles for removing hot air, and in the process, they have a profound effect on the way that a galaxy actually evolves with time. Uh, it's too bad we don't have a chimney right around here so we can get rid of all the hot air coming out of <laughs> our mouths. <laughs> <laughs> this group in Penticton, who are they? How many of them are there and how long are they working on this There's project? Dr. Peter Dudney, who is the director of the Dominion Radio Astrophysical Observatory, and two astronomers, Drs. Norman Doe and Taylor at the University of Calgary, who are leading this investigation. It's a five-year job, and they're going to map in, in unprecedented detail um, the Milky Way from one side to the other. Uh, mm -hmm. from, this, from this array in Penticton. It's interesting how often we've heard uh, e either solo people or small groups can find such major significant finds right, in astronomy. It's still one of the, the great frontiers. That's huh? right. You need, you need a little improvement to the instrumentation and some ingenuity, which is what Canadians have a lot of, and you can go a long way. Unfortunately, five years from now, their mapping will be completed. And at the moment, they have no mandate to continue beyond that. And it may well be that Penticton will be shut down at that time. We're hoping that a new radio project will come to bear uh, to sustain this fantastically good group of people beyond the year 2000. But uh, we have yet to determine how yet. We have a couple seconds left, Dr. McCall. I want to ask you quickly about a couple other things. We've heard about new planets yes. around a star near us. Yes. This is significant? That's right. There, uh, a planet was found around a star that's only about uh, 10 light years away from us. That's the nearest star for which planets have been found. Um, the pl what's interesting about it is the star is, uh, the location of the planet is comparable to that of the location of Jupiter. And not only that, the planet appears to be comparable to Jupiter. So people are excited about it because it appears that the solar system is similar to ours. Hmm. With all the speculation, of course, that leads to yeah. it. And while we're talking about Jupiter, uh, Galileo is whipping right by old Ganymede, huh? That's right, Ganymede, Today. one of the, uh, yep, the biggest satellite of Jupiter. Um, and unfortunately, the antenna of uh, Galileo is broken. It's going to take a while for us to get the pictures back. But uh, I'm sure when we do get them, we'll see lots of exciting detail on the surface but of the Ganymede. But the pictures that have been coming back have been pretty exciting. So far, uh, so far, it's not so much pictures as uh, data associated with the atmospheric composition of Jupiter, and they've been learning all kinds of things about the uh, layers, the cloud layers of Jupiter because of that probe that they sent right down into the atmosphere. Nice to see you again. Yeah, good to see always, you too. I always learn something when you're around here. <laughs> uh, we'll be right back in the program.